Welcome back to another Edgework Series preview. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Dallas Stars Vegas Golden Knights Series here in round one of the 2024 NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. And to help us do so, we got someone in sports, Matt Russell, and the number one Dallas Stars fan of the Edgework Show. Number one, I, I mean, Predators, uh, Blues to Miss playoffs, Habs. Um, any other teams that I'm missing here Islanders. that I should be throwing I mean, in? Islanders, yeah. Any of those teams, you throw them in there, he's the number one fan, Alex Moretto. But we'll be breaking this one down, giving out best bets, as well as taking a look at some different ways to approach this one and our series predictions. And, uh, I, I mean, basically, we're just going to throw ourselves on the line and make ourselves look like idiots when it all goes awry and everyone clips these videos and comes back and says, look how dumb you were. But... Nonetheless, these gentlemen will be joining me here today to help us break it down. So this year, Vegas 3-0 against the Dallas Stars. All three of those victories came ahead of 2024. So make of that what you will, but all three of those wins before the new calendar year here. But when you look at Pinnacle, you look at the prices posted for this series, it's a little bit different than what the season history would imply. You got the Dallas Stars minus 139. We see the Golden Knights plus 121 right now. You want to look to some different markets. Okay, fine. Dallas Stars minus one and a half plus 142. The Golden Knights plus one and a half minus 165. Now, Moretto, these prices are obviously going to factor in the fact that you're getting $140 million coming off of LTIR for the Vegas Golden Knights here. But regardless of that, what do you think about how these two teams match up and where the price currently sits at? Yeah, it's honestly, it is a difficult one to try and make an actual price for just because of the fact that we don't know the ceiling of this Vegas team. Um, we also don't know the floor. Like we've never seen this roster as best constructed actually play together, right? Like a lot of what we're talking about with Vegas here has to be in hypotheticals. Um, obviously added some big names, but also had a lot of guys injured throughout the season, right? So on paper, the roster is up there as one of the best and deepest in the NHL, without a doubt. Um, you look at that roster top to bottom right now, fully healthy as fully constructed, it's fantastic. But it is also very hard in this league and any league to just flip a switch and kind of reach the top of your range, right? And there have been so many moving parts all season, no consistency with the lines, no consistency with who's in and out of this Vegas lineup. We still have no idea how the lines are gonna look or who's even gonna play game one. They're at the point now where they have like 15 forwards, um, you know, eight, nine demon that can potentially be in the lineup for this game one. And there's a chance that Vegas can put it all together and it's outstanding, but probably, probabilistically speaking, um, the odds of that are not very high. And you'd feel a lot more confident in that being the case if they had a few weeks to kind of figure things out before the playoffs, but they don't. And now the reality is they're facing a stars team here. That's going to give them basically zero margin for error because this team is absolutely a juggernaut. Um, I mean, I look at this Vegas roster and they had nine guys play over 70 games this year. And a few of those guys aren't even probably going to be in the lineup in game one. Guys they counted on throughout the season are probably going to come out for guys that have barely played for them at all. Um, I, I'm not even sure who's going to be in there. It's not as simple as just filling up a lineup sheet and, you know, everything flowing smoothly. We're not running simulations here. You know, the game is not played on a spreadsheet, the old saying as it goes. Um, these are very significant real life factors that are at play. And we're going to have guys playing together in game one who have never played together before. Um, and honestly, that's kind of a terrifying prospect if you're a Vegas fan. And obviously, these are very talented players. But like I said, you can't just factor, you know, you can't just flip a switch, right? Um, you have to factor in the health of some of these guys too. Stone coming back for the first time, hasn't played since like February from a pretty significant injury. Pietrangelo ha hasn't played in almost three weeks. Um, Hurdle's only played a handful of games with the team. Guys like Eichel, Martinez, Theodore, they've all missed considerable time. And on the flip side, you have a Stars team that's kind of been a model of consistency all season. They were blessed with good health, obviously very lucky in that department. You have to be a bit lucky there. Um, they had 10 guys play at least 79 games. And of the 18 guys who you would project to be in their lineup on forward and defense in this game one, just four of them played under 70 games. And obviously two of them being... Tanev and, and Stankoven, one of them who was called up and one of them acquired via trade uh, later in the season. And then Nils Lundqvist, who was kind of rotating in and out of the lineup as a 6D man. And then Sagan, who played 68. So, I mean, the guys on this team, they have a terrific understanding of one another. They know their line mates. They know their roles. There's kind of a chemistry and continuity there that they've sort of built and developed and honed over time. Um, and I think there's a lot to be said for that, which numbers just can't quite account for, which is why 
I personally think that this uh, this price is a little bit short on the stars and um, there's some value there. And, you know, probably no surprise to anyone since I've been on this team uh, time and time again. But, um, yeah, we're going to run it back here. Well, Matt, I don't know if you heard Moretto talking about you can't build this. It's not played on spreadsheets and all this stuff. Because <laughs> when I turn on the new NHL video game and I update the roster with Thomas Hurdle and Jack Eichel and Mark Stone all coming back to the lineup, seems like they perform pretty well there. I don't know. What are your numbers telling you? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, just fundamentally, Alex is right about trying to make a price for this series. Fundamentally, this price is made up. This is a made up price, right? This isn't right. based on anything. This is based, uh, as Alex said, on, on hypotheticals. It's based on a hypothesis. And the hypothesis being that the Golden Knights are going to be much better with these guys coming back uh, than they have been all season long. Because all season long, we're looking at a team, you know, top of the West versus a wild card team. Right. And like the price should be way higher for that just sort of theoretical matchup. And I, as a better, like, I'm not really all that into whether it's football, basketball, whatever, kind of just keeping my fingers crossed that a team is going to, you know, be at a value that is not nearly where they've played all season long. If the season long metrics of the Golden Knights had depressed their value and they were getting these guys back and any assumption that I would make on them improving, uh, gave me sort of a valuable bet to make then yeah i would take my chances right with like a significant underdog price going okay you know they're going to be better because this price is saying they are definitely going to be better and there is no question about it and not only that they're going to be as good as the dallas stars across the board these teams obviously matched up last year and you know dallas kind of ran out of gas they bleeped around too long with the seattle kraken playing a seven game series there they came in all banged up against the golden knights you know, and couldn't necessarily uh, run with them and their goaltending stunk. Right. Meanwhile, the golden Knights were getting like historically insane, random goaltending from basically anybody that they would put in there. And then guess what happened when those guys had, you know, the Aiden Hills of the world had to actually play in a full regular season. Hasn't gone particularly well for the golden Knights. Right. So unless the golden Knights just, you know, turn back the clock one year, have this insane high danger conversion rate that they had last year, and sick goaltending from basic no names then yeah okay then this price makes sense then it is essentially a coin flip type series i was knocking over the women and children for dallas minus 125 on an open uh earlier this morning so like i, I teased the guys beforehand that you know i'm going to keep my pick a surprise because you know i think not to spoil it for so money but i think he might be on the same side as us here yeah this is insane, this price. Like, it's my biggest bet of the group. And, you know, Alex, you might be, you know, Moretto Haskinen. I don't know what my, you know, <laughs> Dallas Star, my Dallas Star name is going to be, but we can kind of come up with that by the end of the show. Uh, so, Money, you got yourself a Dallas Star's name over there? No, because, <laughs> in, because in three series, I'm going to be hating them when they're playing the Canucks. Okay, um, yes, right. Too so... Sure. I, I I think both Alex and Matt have made some great points. I just wanted to expand on a couple of them. So Alex was saying that it's tough to determine the ceiling for this Vegas team, right? So all year, I've kind of been giving them the benefit of the doubt, right? That um, whatever they're doing, they're going to turn it around. They've, they've got the cup pedigree, this and that, right? And, and Matt also mentioned that this series price is made up because we really don't know who Vegas is. And I agree with both of those points. So in terms of the series price being made up, I think a lot of it with Vegas comes down to the way that they performed to start the season. And it's easy for us to kind of think about that and view that as their ceiling. That's really dangerous because knowing what we know now at the end of the season about all the teams, I implore you to go take a look at who Vegas played to get off to that good start, right? There's a bunch of cupcakes in there, right? And knowing what we know now, that start doesn't seem as good um, as we may think it was. So so that's tough to get, to get a ceiling on them. In terms of the floor, we don't know the floor, but what I do know is that while I was watching this team closely, pretty much from February onwards, waiting for them to turn it around, they just couldn't get to a certain level, right? At some point, again, we know that I don't care about the about the final score. 
I care about the way that the game was played. And they just were not able to get to that level. That's very concerning. And now you're just expected to turn on the switch against a Dallas team that's been playing at a very high level since early February, right? It's very tough to do. So maybe maybe Vegas has a switch. Um, I'm betting that they don't just because historically what they're trying to do at this point against a team that's the caliber of the stars, that's very tough to do. So I've got the odds with me. I've, I've got the historical odds with me saying that Dallas should be able to win this series. All right. Well, breaking it down from that standpoint, it seems like everyone is kind of leaning towards stars direction here, but at some point we're going to have to dig into some bets and that point is right now. In terms of best bets for this series, Moreto, I'll go to you first because when we've broken each of these series down, we see the series prices coming out on Pinnacle. Everyone's kind of talked about how this is pretty much in the ballpark of where they thought they should be or expected them to be, whether anyone had an edge on e- either game or either or either series, excuse me, on either side at any point, they would come up. It was not that, that common, but you seem to be the person who was able to find some value on series prices. Are you able to find that here again in this series? And if not, do you have another bet for us? No, I am. Um, this is, I mean, I, I basically just laid out everything that I wanted to lay out when it comes to this matchup and why I think that there's value with this stars team. And realistically, like what it essentially boils down to is Vegas will have their moments with this group because this is a very good roster. But again, they just won't be able to find that consistency given all the rust and all the moving pieces and moving parts and stuff. Um, And they're just not going to be able to find the consistency to beat a team as good as this Dallas Stars team is. So, yes, I do think there's plenty of value in this number and there is room to bet it still. Um, You know, a, a decent amount of room to bet it. I also like taking a stab at stars minus one and a half, maybe even stars minus two and a half because the the reality is these teams are very different right now than they were when they met in the conference finals last year. And um, I don't think that's being reflected at all in this price, just how different they really are and how different their seasons have been. Um, how, they, you know, coming into this uh, series right now, coming into the playoffs, the expectations, everything. Um, I think, you know, stars, any which way you kind of want to go about it, I think that there's going to be value there. And uh, in terms of my best bet, I will just stick with the series price, but I do like, you know, taking a stab with, with this series to end a lot quicker maybe than uh than the line is suggesting here based on uh, how close that closely this is being lined right there you go there's our first best bet of the series a first maybe even two two part bet there if that's how you want to approach this one two different ways within one with uh dallas winning this series matt how is it that you're looking at this one and uh getting yourself financially involved yeah like i mentioned already came in mega hard on the stars at minus 125 the best price i could find this morning so you you know you're going okay mega hard that (laughs) not not just hard mega Mega hard hard. there's a bill for that yeah (laughs) (laughs) listen if if the stars if the stars win this series and do so convincingly no pills will be necessary so uh (laughs) you know we should probably mention at least you know from a stars perspective like individually you know some of the players on their team right there's a lot of sort of guys who are a lot you know younger and last year would have been their sort of first experience in the playoffs and so getting you know three rounds in last year uh and, and and being able to sort of take away from that to to uh you know uh 22 years old and already have like three playoff series like a Wyatt Johnston like that's amazing um so yeah I've already bet it what would I bet it to um you know honestly I have the Golden Knights still an above average team and so the question sort of goes like all right how much more you know above average am I willing to go and if I went like another 10 percent above average I would still be able to bet the stars here at like minus 160 so all the way up to basically minus 150 is sort of where I'd be um, comfortable with sort of suggesting that people lay that price that being said you know we look at the first round or excuse me the first game uh money line for the stars minus 133 gonna be betting that as well wouldn't be that interested in the series if i wasn't interested in game one but if you think about it this way too you know the stars having home ice we can expect them to be around minus 130 minus 140 come game seven if we need that right so when i you know, make a lot of these bets, whether it's, you know, an over five and a half games in Washington and the Rangers, you know, I'm looking ahead to sort of think to myself, okay, like, 
you know, what position do I want to have come game six, come game seven, right? Ideally, I want to kind of give every team I bet on two, two bites of the apple, two chances, right? So the idea being like, if I have something over five and a half games, like I'd like the series to be two, two. So I get two chances to extend the series to game six. So, you know, I'm kind of working backwards where it's like, I don't necessarily want to bet the stars minus one and a half because I want to give them two chances at this price. Otherwise, I would just wait around for game seven. So, you know, grab the price now. Ideally, we get sort of a 3-2 lead type situation, and they get two chances to uh, to convert the series, uh, the victory, and um, and we won't need to pop any pills. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to be, uh, I don't even know what comes after Mega. Ludicrous. Robot. Like in, uh, <laughs> yeah, robots. <laughs> Oh god, dangerous. Let's, yeah, let's get off of that. You guys are concerning me here with the uh predatory me vibes of like what the first <laughs> show we did of the season where we had uh preds and everyone was involved in that one because I'm I'm on Dallas here as well, but so money is there a different bet that you've got or are we just gonna go all the way around? Everyone's betting stars to win this series. So frankly, I am a little bit concerned um, <laughs> okay. with, the, with the way that I've already bet this series because of the amount of shit I'm going to get if if it doesn't work out for me, right? So so let's 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 go back a little bit, right? So last year in the conference final, let's not forget that those first two games went into overtime, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and one of those games, Dallas really really screwed it up. Matt Matt mentioned against the Seattle series they were too busy screwing around um, to to uh, to put that team away like they should. Early early in this season, Dallas was still screwing around. They're a team that has a penchant for screwing around, right? Um, and they've done that now with this core for the last couple of years. So you look so you look at the head to head, the Dallas Vegas head to head three three nothing Vegas usually. You can tell a lot by the way the teams match up if you're able to isolate like the different variables like the travel and injuries and all that. Usually you can tell a lot by the by the head-to-head matchups. In this case, there's not much you can tell. Um, Dallas was not at a level that they are now. Their last meeting was December 9th, right? Um, two of those three games still went into overtime, right? So so there's not much you can you you can tell. So if I'm coming in high on Dallas, if I concede that um, I may have been wrong waiting for Vegas to turn it around, um, which which they just couldn't do, we've um, I think Matt Matt touched on the historic goaltending that um, that that Eden Hill provided them last year, which I will bet against that. Like show it to me again, and if they if it happens, I'll lose money on that again. Um, but I will bet against that happening. So then I look at this series in terms of the pricing too, right? Like, I do agree with the guys with their minus 125 and minus 130, but I want a little bit more than that, right? So I played the sweep at 9-1. to one. Um, I think that we've we've seen this in the past, right? So so the the Columbus-Tampa Bay series comes to mind, right, where – um, where 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 I bet Columbus pretty much every game, bet them in that series. That's the game that th- that's the series that they lost to Boston, um, and and I had Columbus um, Cup Cup futures that year after. So they beat Tampa Bay and then they lost to Boston. Um, I I get a very similar vibe with this with this Vegas team. Um, we know a lot that once you lose it in sports, it goes pretty quickly. Um, and if this is a team that even with the guys coming back, you're just trying to get them into the lineup as quickly as you can um, while trying to turn your play around, which you just weren't able to get to a certain level against the Dallas team that's just flying right now. And and I think that Dallas has, like, based on the comments and the coach speak, everything coming out of their camp, it looks like they've learned a lot from from all the screwing around that they've done. I think they finally settled down, right? So, um, with that, Dallas with the sweep. I mean, I'm I'm gonna take a shot here. Oh, you guys are insane! I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it, oh, I love it too. But like, right there. <laughs> yeah, of all of us doing this, like I'm betting Dallas here as well. I'm involved in it on that one. Like, uh Poor Dallas, what a season you had. Congratulations. This is the end of the world. 
<laughs> Final thing we got to get to here to wrap up the show. Uh, we got to go our predictions. Who wins and how many games? I don't even know why I'm asking. Matt, let's go to you. Who wins, Dallas or Vegas, and how many games? Yeah, sorry. I'm still trying to pick up the pieces after the sweep call from so many. <laughs> um, Dallas wins. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's say Dallas wins in six. six okay. Games. Let's do that. Uh, right on Vegas' Brad. ice. Just sending yeah, all the... All the new fans home. Bring the sword out. Assassination style on the night at center ice. Yeah, after. full on guillo- yeah. guillotine situation. <laughs> yeah. Just mm-hmm. absolute. Yeah, May, I might. You might say a mega guillotine. guillotine. A mega guillotine. guillotine? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Moretto, where where are you at here? Yeah, I'm gonna keep us uh, descending here. So Russell said stars in six. I will say stars in five. So money. Ooh. What are you so I bet stars in four, <laughs> but I think it's going to be stars in five. Okay. Whew. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. There you go. Um, I think I'm going stars in five here as well. I think the f- part that Moretto said is so important. I know, but like talking about this built on, you don't play this on the spreadsheet. You don't, it, you, you're going to throw these guys in here together game one and be like hey go figure it out i know that you're incredible players but it doesn't always just work like that it can but it doesn't always and to bank on it being the case against a team who i think is incredible over on the other side i I think you get one out of it i don't think that it's going to be that easy for them i'm stars and five that's that's mine we 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 killed the stars boys we We did it it. Yeah, maybe 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 this was the plan all along to get the Canucks mm-hmm. through the conference. <laughs> right. Ooh. Right. Wow. Ooh. Somebody's playing chess over here. Yeah. That's a provocative take. That's a yeah. provocative okay. take. What's the what's the uh phrase? You reach for the moon, you murder the stars, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, close, close. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Well, that'll do it for this series preview. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you're a Vegas Golden Knights fan, I flick it three, four, five times because I think we might have just killed the stars here and gotten you through the first round. So uh, if we did, then you come back to this video and you share it with everybody. Or if you are a Golden Knights fan, share this around and tell everyone how bad we are at picking. And uh, you can just... And welcome to hockey too, by the way. Over there. Like, thanks, <laughs> yeah, for, exactly. thanks for joining hockey. Exactly. You know? I'm glad you're and, enjoying it. And while you're at it, get your Canucks futures in too. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Drop your comments below. Let us know how many games is this one going to take? Who's going to win this one? We can't wait to read all those comments. Thank you, Matt, Alex, and so money for taking the time to break this one down. We do appreciate it. And hopefully people out there were able to have some takeaways. We will have more series, uh, Edgework series, previews and predictions right here on this channel. We'll see you guys for those.